And how are you now? Not so bad. Good news. So yeah, it's a uh, bit of a tin factory going on in here. Um, still a few big sheets, long sheets over in the corner. So if you'd seen the last video, you'll know that I'm short some of that stuff. So um, it's a roof. The only people going to see it, they're going to be aliens and uh, fairies and, you know, dragons and things flying above. So uh, I don't really care what color it is as long as it covers the beasties and keeps the wet snow and all that stuff off their backs. So, yeah, so I'm just kind of doing an inventory of what all I have. Most of these short pieces are for the gap at the top ridge of the roof where they uh, bungle up with the measurements. Still don't know whose fault that was. Probably this guy. So, most of that'll be for that stuff. So then we have some long red, there's some long white, and then there's a whole bunch of medium. Like there's a whole stack there of 10 footers. So, there's more than enough to get the roof done. It's just going to be interesting looking. Conversation today, this thing. Now, we paid enough for this tractor. We paid, they were asking 41,000 for it. It's a 1995, it is basically a uh, one of these, but it's rebadged Agco Alice because that's this is after the big takeover. So I'm not going to say where I got it from because that's an issue. Needless to say, they gave me a whacking $500 off the asking price for a tractor with over 10,000 hours on it, and many issues. You all know that it's been having hydraulic issues. The bottom step fell off of it, which I have replaced and is now giggity. It has leaks all over the place. Uh, the fuel system was absolutely packed with crap. As you will have seen in last year's videos. Uh, about 10 months ago, I think I was fighting with this thing, fuel starvation. Yeah, that's mostly water just so you know, there is oil under there. What is it they say? If your machine's leaking, you'll never actually have to change the oil. It'll just, just keep topping it up. Well, this has an issue with the hydraulics. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in the proportioning valve because for the first two hours of a cold day, you can't use the steering and forward motion and the bucket at the same time, or it just kicks it out of gear. You can imagine that's quite frustrating in a cattle farm where you're trying to do your chores. So, but once you get to about two, depending on how cold it is, but two hours, it starts working fairly good. But if it's a really, really cold day, you can't use full RPMs. Let's see if I can show you this. Pushing diesel, unburnt diesel up the exhaust pipe. And what I have also noticed is that if you don't give it lots of RPMs when it's, when it's sitting idling, the engine cools off really, really quick. Really, really quick. Um, so I, I just pulled the bullet and uh, I know you're probably all sh shouting at this point already. Thermostat. So yeah, genuine Agco Massey parts. You know. Pretty sure it's still the original one in it because from what I can gather when I have the shields off, 
everything looks like it hasn't been dickered around with too much. Too much. Um, but the spitting diesel up the exhaust and misfires and going by what I've seen. We're doing these. Yay. More injectors. So yeah, there's two more in here with the little washers because there's uh, bolt-on T's for the uh, fuel lines, the returns. Because injectors, fuel pressure there. And then, oh, there it is. And then return, the return T bolts in there. So there's another two injectors and then the little, uh, they're aluminum washers. They're not the copper ones like you see here. So, we're doing another injector job. Yay. Now, big shout out again to Ward at Wheat City Diesel. Um, his uh, supplier, best supplier, getting Stanodyne injectors, which these are, this is a Sisu engine, not a Cummings. Yeah, I should have knew that by the lack of a turbo. It's a Sisu, but apparently they're just as reliable as what Cummins are. And it, it is a fairly tight motor. So, Stanodyne. They quoted 430 bucks per injector. Um, he got me them for 250. And these actually had to be ordered from Italy to Stanodyne in Windsor, Connecticut. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be one of the jobs. I'm not sure I'm doing that today, but we will be videoing it. So, going to pull off the panels and bring you back. And we're back. So, yeah. Talk about a doe head move. Of course, that's not a Cummins. So, it's not too big of a job. Just got to uh, drop the fluid and the motor down below the uh, rock cover and uh, pull that. Like I said, pretty sure nothing's moved in there in a long time. Um, yeah, like I said, when you get looking in there, it's not hard to see. That's definitely not a Cummins. So, yeah. Not a lot of, oh yeah, this is another job. This, uh, we have to replace this pump this year before, uh, before summer work. So yeah, between 1700 for the injectors, um, which is still a good deal. Like I said, thanks Wade. Uh, the thermostat was like 60 bucks and gasket like another eight or nine bucks. So thanks to Show Lake Farm Equipment and Show Lake. Like I said, if you uh, are looking for anything that's Agco related, just ask the boss lady at the front desk there. She will know what it is and where it is without even touching a computer. Amazing. So yeah, there'll probably be another at least thousand dollars in the AC pump, um, but that'll be a future project. And like I said, uh, see if I can get you guys in here without losing my phone. Those. Yeah, they're nasty looking. They all got to come out. From and amongst all of this stuff. So yeah, this should be fun. But today is the thermostat. So let's get at her. So. It's a bit grungy, but uh, for the most part, it doesn't look too bad. Does it look like it's 25 years old? Mm, probably. Uh, so, can I figure out all the parameters look about right? Um, 
So I know this is a genuine Massey part. Is that the factory one from Agco or Sisu? I don't know. But the numbers are there, so anyway. So the, ga the uh, thermostat goes in, the gasket goes in on top of it, and then the housing. So this is to clean up, just to clean all the crud and stuff off that surface. There shouldn't be really too much in the way of gasket. Um, what I do is I stuff a rag down the hole and then I start shaving the gasket off. That way you're not gonna get a bunch of crud run through the system because not entirely sure if that would go through the antifreeze filter or end up going through the radiator filter um, but don't want to take the chance so I'm gonna clean the gasket off get on and there it's back together and that sound you hear is because this thing has shitty hydraulics I turned the bucket as far up as it would go because there was a lot of snow and shit melting in the bucket, pardon my French. Now it's all over the workshop floor because this thing has crap hydraulics. Now you know why I won't mention who I bought it from. No, it wasn't them. Because of this. Ugh. Anyway, so a little trick that might help some of you out there, uh, especially for the likes of working with antifreeze, what I do is I dip the gasket in the antifreeze before I put it in. So basically that seals up all the pores. So as you smash the bolts down, it squeezes out all of the excess antifreeze and now it bonds the gasket right to everything if you want to give it another wee cinch down after the engine cycled a couple of times go right ahead but i learned that from an old guy in town and i've done it ever since and i've never had an issue yet so take from that what you may uh like i said just dip it quick dip just enough to get it wet <laughs> and uh, fire in there and there you go while I'm working on this, I just noticed something. Let's see if I can zoom you guys in. Look at that. Wiry, cable-y stuff wrapped around the pump. I don't know if that's belt wire or where it came from. It's not quite pushing up against the uh, fan clutch, but not supposed to be there, so I'm gonna cut that out and fill her back up with fluid. Well, that escalated. So it's not cable, wire, whatever. It's net wrap. How it got in there, I don't know. But as you can see, It's right in the clutch seal area. So that's probably got a lot to do with why the fan would just run constantly. Sorry. So yeah, I just could not fish it out while it was in there. So I've got it out here. So now I'm going to be playing away with this for a while. Awesome! That's sarcasm, by the way. Oh yeah, it's still getting messy and stinky as all hell. Yeah. That's not a pleasant job. Sure was a lot of, uh... The only best way to describe that would be the same kind of dust you get around uh, a mix mill, like a bruiser. That fine ons dust, all of the veins uh, were all packed with that. Um, 
So yeah, pulled all of the twine and net wrap, whatever it was that was in there. It wasn't really, it hadn't eaten into it. It wasn't like stuck in the, uh, where the, I don't know, what do you call that there? It's a clutch of some kind. It's, it's a fluid clutch. Uh, it wasn't worked its way in, so it wasn't really limiting it, but better out than in. That's what I always say. Um, so yeah, it's all out. Fans back in. I'm not its greatest fan, but it's in. Um, yeah, I filled the fluids back up, cycled the engine a couple of times just to get all the burbles out. Uh, you guys can't see any cleeks. You just kind of, I better get in there. Uh, you can kind of just see the moisture that uh, I squeezed out of the gasket. Like I said, you, uh, you can take from it what you will, but like I said, it was an old guy. He'd done, he was a tire and a service guy, uh, old school. And that's what he always did. And that's what I always do. And like I said, never had a problem. So, gonna take it. It's about minus 30 outside. I'm gonna go and do silage. Oh yeah, it's trying to snow again. Oh, you can't even see a dang thing out there. Huh. Well, you're not missing much, it's white. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm gonna throw the panels back on, go and do the cows, and then once I'm done, I've got some cleaning up to do. Awesome. Yeah, at some point we have to do ram kits on this. Just damp, boys. The, uh, the tilts are the worst though. See, that one up there is not so bad. Good and you. See, you can see it there. But that one is the worst. It's the worst of all four. Um, so yeah. This tractor needs a lot of work. Some of it I don't think I'm going to do. Because the, the ones up at Show Lake Farm Equipment, where I get the parts, they're going to go in there. That's where all the trouble is. So, thanks for watching.